Welcome back, everybody, to the sidebar. We got rid of Brian Kibler, but we added Papa Smithy. Of course, Dan's still joining me. The grand final is set between Diony and Handsome Guy. But before we do that, it is time for another Whispers of the Old Gods card reveal. I'm excited. I know these two guys are excited, and I know you guys are at home are excited as well. So without further ado, let's introduce the card. It is Infest. It is a hunter rare spell. Give your minions death rattle. Add a random beast to your hand. Papa Smithy, what do you think of this card? First glance. Well, effectively, it's going to be really strong, and most hunter archetypes will want to build a big board of low cost minions, and then you're effectively giving that web spinner death rattle to all your minions. Yeah, this card reminds me a lot of Soul of the Forest. I, we didn't actually get to look at the card before it, but now that I'm examining it, uh, it does. It, it might look a little bit too slow relative to what Hunter usually wants to do, but people said the same thing about cards like Soul of the Forest, which people found a home in the Egg Druid, which gives a nod to guys like Jackie Chan, who use it to climb the top one legend all the time. Yeah, this could be a card that's used in slower Hunter decks, which which may, you know, come into fruition once we. Well, Blizzard's not giving up on the board not. control oriented they hunter. Not. They're not. They even made posts about it uh, on on their blogs about trying to make it happen. I personally think it's a pretty interesting card because uh, not only is it board control, because effectively Death Rattle is so hard to trade into it, but it also gives you a lot of card advantage. And it, it, it kind of has the same feeling of things like Ball of Spiders, except that this time you're not casting six mana, it's only three mana. It feels much more reasonable compared to the six mana investment of Ball of Spiders. I guess one thing that I noticed is that, of course, Hunter has always been one of those classes that's been very susceptible to board clears. You don't run a lot of death rattle creatures that respawn like Nerubian Egg that Warlock maybe did. So perhaps creating that more sturdy board might be relevant, but the three cost with just how Hunter always wants to fit in the hero power. Is it going to be too slow? Is it going to be too expensive? I mean, the meta will shake out in a different way, so it's hard to say, but interesting nonetheless. I think it just, what it does is it gives uh, Hunter an opportunity to start deviating from the original plan. I think when people look at the classic set and they look at Goblins vs. Gnome, they look at uh, Nax Ramus being rotated out, they still look at the idea that Hunter can be super aggressive, but there's no other way to build Hunter. And I think people are really looking for an, an opportunity to have an identity shift because most classes have multiple ways to play the class. You look at Priest, for example, you can play Dragon Priest, which is a little bit more mid-range centric, or you can play Control. You look at Warrior with Patron in Control as well. You don't really have that with Hunter. So I think, you know, it's very clear that we're trying to design an opportunity to take a more token board control-esque, have the Sea Giants, have the Cult Masters, have all these different things that really help benefit off of it. And I, I kind of like that direction that they're going. All right, well, as is Hearthstone Championship Tour card reveal tradition... We're going to have a bit of a challenge. Of All two weeks of it, exactly. <laughs> the grandest of traditions. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a challenge here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and forth, and you guys are going to name beasts until one player can no longer name a beast. Oh, uh, boy. For tradition, for the, uh, as a theme for the Infest card. Uh, okay. So we're going to start with Ferdinand, and you got to go fast. you got to okay. go rapid fire. No thinking. So Ferdinand, go. Web Spinner. Direwolf Alpha. The Beast. Stranglethorn Tiger. King Crush. Godzilla. Uh, Oasis Snapjaw. Hey, let's think of this. Uh, Stone Tusk Boar. King Mukla. I'm already, I'm already feeling like <laughs> I'm at the end of things. Okay, give me a second here. Think no, about no. your country in Australia. You have so many beasts out there. Okay, uh, Haunted Creeper. Yeah. Uh, River Crocolisk. Uh, Huffa. All right, to capture your monger. Going with the deep cuts there. <laughs> I am, man. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm leaving you the easy ones, Papa Smithy. Did we say King Crush already? We did. Okay. I'm already, I'm already failing here. Already. I like to call a clock, Judge. All right. And Ferdinand wins. Mounted Raptor, Mookless Champion, Pit Snake. You've got the whole Silverback oh, Patriarch, here. Starving Buzzer, Stranglethorn Tiger, Stampeding Kodo. Keep going. No. Wow, that's game, 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 game is over. Congrats. Game is over. Frodan wins. And uh, now that the games are over, it's a really cool card. Looking forward to it. And keep in mind, guys, you can head over to oldgods.com if you want to see that card reveal, plus many, many more. Uh, but let's start talking about the grand finals. We have it set. Like we talked about, it is the all-Korean grand final. So let's introduce our first finalist. It is going to be Dione. 
All right, so Diane comes in here as uh, primarily known as a streamer. For people who have watched and browsed throughout the directories of Twitch, you might have noticed that Diane is probably the most watched Korean streamer out there. And he's more known for his antics. People really like to com compare him to a Maz in the West, uh, of having very high energy, very emotive reactions. However, he comes into this competition saying, you know what, I'm not going to play these weird, obscure, gimmicky decks. I'm just going to play really solid stuff and really show people that I can be serious and I can win. And now that he's here in the finals, I think he's really made that statement having defeated players like UCCU, like Handsome Guy, or sorry, lost a Handsome Guy before, but now he has an opportunity to redeem himself, even though last time he went up against Handsome Guy, he lost. And the Korean regional preliminaries was the first chance he had to really show himself on a top tournament stage, made it to this tournament, He's brought very standard decks and to a great degree has piloted them well. Perhaps the only exception has been the Freeze Mage Mirror we saw where he really struggled. But I do like his flair. You saw Deathwing there being one of the cards that's really interesting in Warrior. Another one is Raven Nidal. It's not even just one Raven Nidal because he wants to throw in a tech and be a little bit different. He has two Raven Nidals. So it, it has played a big factor in some of his Druid games, which often has been the deciding game in the series. And I'm looking forward to see if these small little tech choices will give him the edge against an opponent that he's very familiar with. Uh, he's even played in the earlier part of the tournament It's Handsome Guy. Worth knowing that Handsome Guy did take him down the first time. We thought there might actually be identical decks between these two, but the Warrior archetype, where we finally saw the difference. Control Warrior versus Patron Warrior will be the matchup. All right, and with that, that's a good transition to start talking about the second finalist for the Asia Pacific Winter Championship. It's Handsome Guy. So Handsome Guy is a player that a lot of people, even within the Korean scene, were saying, this guy's probably going to win it all. Um, and it wasn't even necessarily a, the like a, a, an intuition that has any factual basis. In fact, whenever Handsome Guy has played in tournaments, he actually has had disastrous <laughs> moments on stream where everything crumbled because he got nervous, made uh, some very bad plays. However, I think this tournament, he's kept his composure completely, and he seems like a completely different guy than the person that I casted a year ago at the Viagame Game House Cup. He's looking for redemption. You know, he's looking to overcome a reputation of being, I mean, there's no really polite way to say it, a choker when it comes to top level competition because his ladder performance and his overall skill in Hearthstone has never been denied. Yeah, and Handsome Guy, you know, being able to take out some really tough opponents, you see Navi Youth that he beat, uh, he, he, and he wasn't sure because he has these. He has a lineup that I would say is tried and true, but it also is a little bit all over the place. He has Zoo and Freeze Mage, which has two polar, it's not polar opposite, but they deviate in terms of what the lineup's trying to accomplish. Usually you have one split or the other of what you're trying to target. So the only thing that strikes against Handsome Guy, in my opinion, is that his lineup, while pretty solid individually, does the lineup fit well against uh, Daihuni, who has a much more holistic approach to the lineup. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at their lineups side by side to see exactly what, what we're going to be seeing uh, in the grand final. So you can see there's the match plate there. So Papa Smithy, talk, talk to me about these deck lineups, uh, where they differ, and what are some of the mismatches we should look for when, when looking at the, the full deck lineups of these two players? I mean, we finally saw Dionys Warrior deck being revealed in his last series. It had been banned previously. The Control Warrior, but not the Removal Control Warrior that we've seen so much this tournament. Again, a much more standard Control Warrior. A harkening back to years ago, but still with Elise Starseeker. So it feels like a bit more greedy because you're not running low cost removal, you're running threats. And it's against Patron Warrior. With Double Brawl, I still think it shapes up pretty well. But that's probably the unique matchup between the two, because otherwise, yep. the decks are identical. I think in the end, these are just comfort decks for these guys. I mentioned that Zoo and Freeze Mage, they have different opposites. Their weaknesses are sometimes their strength. Druid, for example, being the, the common line. But you do have one split down the middle that is a pretty significant difference. It's the Patron Warrior versus the Control Warrior. And that does give uh, Dahuni a, a pretty significant edge, because not only is it good against... Uh, the Patron Warrior in the heads-up mirror match, but it also is good against Freeze Mage. It also has an opportunity to fight pretty well against Zoo. So I feel like, in the end, Daihoni does get a slight edge, and that's going to be my pick to win this series. Plus, I really like the idea that he's trying to really prove people that he's not an overrated player, that people don't like him just because he's funny, but also because he knows a thing or two about card games. It's fun when you have two players with something to prove, and as you mentioned, it feels like Handsome Guy has to ban the Warrior. The flexibility is more there for decision-making for Dionean. It is actually, as you mentioned, with other identical decks, a pretty significant advantage. All right, well, we do have the deck bands in, so let's take a look at what we will be seeing for this finals. It looks yeah. like it is going to be Warrior banned out from Dayuni and, of course, the Warrior banned out from Handsome Guy. So, you know, starting from a, a fresh slate there, both players, I, I think this is pretty much to be expected. Do you agree, Dan? 
Uh, so when you have mirror matches, which it looks pretty much identical across the board with a few flavors, uh, like we said, the Raven Idol being one of them for Dire Knee, uh, what you end up having is you have a lot of mirror matches, which ultimately can be some of the most skill-intensive things in Hearthstone. Look no further than Freeze Mage versus Freeze Mage being one of the big separators from the Chaff and the Wheat. You'll start seeing people who really have a strong, in-depth understanding of how to play that matchup. Uh, some, because some people just flat out make a lot of mistakes with so many room for error uh, as the game goes on. Even a deck, even a matchup like Zoo versus Zoo, you, you'll talk to some of the players there. It's one of the decks that truly represents easy to learn, hard to master. And I'm looking forward to see who's going to be the one who's getting the edge. Because in the, the, again, the mirrors heads up, you have to play every single edge that you get, and sometimes it's going to go in their favor. I'm looking forward to see who's going to get the edge. Now that we actually see that it's going to be the mirror classes, every time we've seen Dayani in a mirror match, specifically Freeze Mage, I think he's been second best. And mm -hmm. now... You know, he talked about coming to this tournament, overcoming the stigma, playing standard decks instead of his favorites. For example, the Priest that he didn't bring here today. Handsome guy already won this matchup previously. And you know, now that I think about it, now that I see that cemented, both players have something to prove, but I have to, again, now slightly give the tilt over to Handsome Guy. All right, so Dan, you have Diony as your prediction. And Papa Smith, you have Handsome Guy. So we're split here, and the grand final is set. Who will be the Asia Pacific Winter Champion. Let's get to know a little bit more about our finalists before we jump in to the grand final. Don't go anywhere. Hearthstone 말고는 거의 취미가 없다고 싶어할 정도로 저는 하스스톤을 굉장히 좋아합니다. 약간 놀리는 식으로 애들이 따윤이 따윤이 이런 식으로 하는 놀림감이 됐었는데 흔히들 말하는 이제 어 한국에서 말하는 돌 게임 페인이라는 뜻이 있는데 예, 그게 굉장히 또 저의 와닿는 것 같아요. 어 뭐야 이거? 아 카페. 에이. 아. 하트스톤을 좋아하게끔 사람들이 재밌어하는 것들을 많이 보여드리고 싶어요. 하트스톤의 재미를. 아. 사람들이 보면서 웃을 수 있는 그런 방송을 많이 만들고 싶고 최종 목표는 사람들한테 이제 알려져 있는 영어 좀 하스스톤 했으면 따윤이다 이런 우유 명사가 좀 되고 싶습니다. 이번에 또 어, 오지엔에서 했던 그 한, 한국 챔피언십에서도 사강 사강 때 되게 재밌는 모습 많이 보여드렸거든요. 리노 잭슨이 나와가지고 램시드랑 그래서 살아났던 그 기억이 있는데 이번 대회 역시도 또 저만의 덱을 하나 또 준비해서 가지고 왔습니다. 많은 분들이 아마 또 보면 되게 좋아하지 않을까 생각을 합니다. 그럼 오늘부터 두유노 따위 아니면 No I Don't가 아니라 Yes I Do. 월드 노우 따윤이, 스페이스 노우 따윤이 만들겠습니다. 지켜봐 주세요. 혼자 있을 때는 그냥 가끔 피아노 치는 것 정도가 취미 생활로 하고 있어요. 피아노보다 하스스톤이 훨씬 어려운 것 같아요. 그래서 하스스톤 쪽이 훨씬 좋습니다. 처음에는 제가 직업을 갖기 위한 시험을 준비 중이었는데 그 시험에 대한 스트레스가 심하다 보니까 친구가 하스스톤을 소개시켜줘가지고 그래서 원래 처음부터는 전혀 프로 될 생각이 없었고 취미로만 하고 있었는데 프로 게이머로서의 생활은 랭크로서에 의한 포인트와 대회로서에 의한 포인트를 얻기 위해서 대회를 참가한다거나 네, 랭크를 올린다거나 하는 등의 일을 평소에 하고 있고요. 네 번째 연기. 매일 같이 꾸준히 방송을 하는 시간이 있고 오! 그 외에는 이제 제가 좀 자유롭게 하고 싶은 걸할수 있는 직업인 것 같아요. 저 스스로가 강하다고 생각하는 이유는 이제 꾸준하게 많이 할수 있는 
연습량, 그 꾸준함이 저의 실력의 원동력이 된것 같고요. 응원해 주신 분들이 생각보다 많이 돼서 되게 감사하고 네, 전그 분들의 응원에 어, 기대에 부응할 수 있도록 완벽한 플레이를 할 생각입니다. 사실 저는 이제 엄밀히 말하자면 한국 대표가 아니고 아시아에서 가장 높은 포인트의 선수로 왔기 때문에 어, 어떻게 보면 아시아 대표라고 할수 있고 그래서 저는 제가 아시아에서 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명으로 뽑힌 것에 대해서 좀 스스로 자랑스럽고 블리즈컨 시드까지 받아서 제 스스로가 이제 세계에서도 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명이 될수 있을지 I'm handsome guy and I will not lose anybody. All right, guys, we are back, and it is grand finals time here at the Asia Pacific Winter Championships. I'm Do with me are Brian Kibler and TJ. And well, guys, it was inevitable. Korea versus Korea has come to yet another esport. <laughs> yep. Hearthstone has finally caught up with the rest of the esports <laughs> world. That's right. When it comes to that. It's about time. So yeah. we saw split opinions on the desk about who's going to take it. Diane versus Handsome Guy. Kibler, what do you think? I've got to go with Handsome Guy. Yeah, he said in his interview he's not going to lose to anybody. He has not lost to anybody. He already defeated Diane in this tournament. I think he has been playing stronger than Diane in this event, and I think he's going to take it down. Yep. Very true. I'm actually going to have to go ahead and agree with him. I, you know, I it's always good to split the desk, but I think Handsome Guy is just, he's on fire right now. He's playing super well. It's hard to point out any mistakes that he's made. And while Diany has those couple of flare cards in his uh, in his decks with the Raven Idol and his Druid, which is kind of a cool thing, I just don't think he's going to be able to stand up to Handsome Guy. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with you guys. And uh, I'm curious, though, what do you, the viewers at home, think? Hashtag Diany or hashtag Handsome Guy. Tweet at Play Hearthstone with the additional hashtag. Hashtag HCT and let us know. Want to see that fan vote. Want to see what the fans out there think about our grand finals match. It's going to be really interesting because, yeah, we have like the seasoned ladder player, the guy that's played like over 25,000 ranked games. <laughs> and you've got Diane, the entertainer, who's got that flair, but, you know, may not be quite as solid in the matchup. So it's going to be an exciting finals either way. Yeah, that, that stat is just insane to me. 25,000 ranked How's that possible? games. That's just, that's crazy. That, uh, that's many times what I have played. And I play a lot. <laughs> and a 58% win rate, too. That's crazy. So it's time to intro our players in the grand finals, guys. First, let's take a look at Handsome Guy. Of course, Handsome Guy qualified because he was the highest point earner in all of the Asia Pacific region. So he didn't make it to any qualifier, but I believe he was at 16 points, which was. A pretty impressive number. He talked about it in his interview, how he loves to, to climb the ladder and grind those points in, in open tournaments. So uh, no surprise that he, he's in the grand finals with results like that. I mean, he has he has put up incredible results and incredible play here. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like he has been one of, if not the most solid player in his performance here so far. He really has. I mean, you can tell that he has, especially this meta, just down to his science. But... We've got another compo uh, another player who likes to throw science to the window. He operates in the fantasy realm. Let's meet Dahyuni. Yeah, Dahyuni is a popular entertainer, but he wants to be uh, known for his competitive play as well. He, he said in his interview, you know, oh, everyone's going to be uh, impressed by my custom-made decks. But <laughs> what he's really showing off is that he can play sort of competitive deck decks too. He's not just playing these wacky styles. We did see some, you know, some flair out of some of his decks. You know, sure. the, the Deathwing in his warrior deck, uh, those Raven Idols and Druid, but mostly just, you know, putting up a solid standard lineup here. I think including he meant custom made techs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Decks. <laughs> including <laughs> space. He wants space to know who he is. That's well, space is big. <laughs> yeah. Is, could space even know people? It's like he's going <laughs> to use the prize money to like launch a satellite into space with like Diane on it. It's like space will know Diane yeah. now. That's Pretty actually sure. the, I think it's just the plot for the new Independence Day movie. That's true. <laughs> he's basically also turning into a Bond villain at that point, too. Ooh, but yeah. hey, that's cool. That just kind of adds to the legend, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we know the decks that have already been banned. Both of these players taking out each other's warrior decks. That leaves us again, you know, with a mirror. Uh, what do you think about that going in? Think it's good to just get rid of the warrior? Oh, I think that uh, the warrior deck from Daihani is definitely the strongest deck uh, against Handsome Guy's lineup. I think mm -hmm. that the warrior from Handsome Guy uh, wouldn't be so strong if it weren't for the fact that he also knows his warrior is going to be banned. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's the main point is you, you look at his deck lineups and you think, well, 
in a vacuum, he would ban Druid, you know, probably most of the time. But he knows that his warrior is going to be banned, so he gets rid of the deck that's the best against the rest of his lineup, right. which is a, a really smart choice. You can't just look at your own decks. You have to think about what your opponent is looking at your decks, too. So there's more of a dynamic to it, and I like the way these guys uh, did their bans. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the poll results, see what the fans think about this grand finals. And it is actually going in favor of Handsome Guy, which, again, you know, I can't say I'm too surprised about. I don't think it's hugely in favor of Handsome Guy because uh, I've been saying all weekend, don't count Diane out. This guy can surprise anybody, and he has. But in the end, in the head-to-head, -head, got to go with the fans. I think Handsome Guy's got that little edge. I mean, Handsome Guy won this matchup earlier this weekend. We heard the... Uh, the matchup talk pre uh, their their first meeting, right? And it sounded like Diony was a little bit uncertain. You know, he was a bit afraid to play against Handsome Guy. He said, "Oh, take it easy on me." Yeah. And you know, at th there's no taking it easy here. This is the grand final. That's right. Yeah, Diony he made it all the way through the winter preliminary, the career pre preliminary, which is how he got here. So he's no stranger to going all the way through a tournament. Whereas Handsome Guy, it's been a while since he's been through a large scale tournament like this. Um, we think back to the first couple seasons uh, of OGN Masters, where he finished like top 16 uh, in a few of them. But other than that, he's just been grinding out through opens, grinding on the ladder. So it, this is just a really great story moving into the Grand Finals. Yeah, and it's time to actually move into the Grand Finals. It's time for game number one, guys, between Daihani and Handsome Guy. Korea versus Korea at the Asia Pacific Winter Championship. You're in beautiful LA. It's nice yeah. and warm. <laughs> it, it, is. it is. By that fire, of course, in particularly front of the hard. <laughs> That's right. So it's going to be Freeze Mage from Daihani taking on the Zulok from Handsome Guy in our first game, it looks like. And Daihani is playing that uh, Torch Mage deck, the more sort yeah. of burn oriented style Freeze Mage. Uh, it does cut that Arc Mage Antonitis and cards like Flame Strike to play more direct damage, which makes it. Generally a little stronger in this specific matchup because you do have more burn to just directly throw at your opponent's face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's the brand bronze beard that uh, was so important in that last matchup for Handsome Guy. Well, Handsome Guy has a great hand here. He yeah. has a couple of the very key cards for this matchup. Uh, Iron Beak Owl gives him an answer to Doomsayer, which can otherwise wipe his board. Then he even has Lotheb, and not only Lotheb, but Brand Bronzebeard with Lotheb. That <laughs> yeah. combination can stop the Freeze Mage player from being able to play any spells and completely lock him down to the game. Yeah, it's just a matter of if he can, you know, get to the point where he can play those. But Brand Bronzebeard is actually just going to be played right off the bat on turn three. He does have Dark Peddler, so he can make use of the double battle cry effect. And you can pick up like double power overwhelming oh. or even like a soul fire, but yeah, don't nope. get anything out yeah. there. It does get <laughs> fireballed right away. You see Brand Brownsbeard, he had that like gun ready in his portrait, but he just came right around the corner and ran into a fireball. Yeah. It's a tough life. Looks like it's going to be coin low for handsome guy. All right, this is uh, very aggro. Yeah, this this does shut down the, the ability of Diony to do really much of anything this turn. Yeah. Uh, and it, it is a turn where there aren't many powerful plays that Diony can make with his mana. If he had, say, an Accolade of Pain, he could play that and ping it. But he can't even play something like the Emperor Tharsin, which we do see is in his hand. Yeah, I think this is a play that you make. Uh, it's not a play that you make all the time. Right. It's a play that handsome guy mm -hmm. made because of his hand. He's got a lot of burst in his hand, and he also has the Iron Beak Owl. So he's got great ways to close out the game, especially with Dark Pedal, you can pick up some additional burst. So playing the Lotep just on curve like this and applying as much pressure as possible is good because he has the damage to back it up. Yeah, he's kind of more or less guaranteed himself eight more damage pretty much no matter what happens. Will Diony drop that Doomsayer? No, he's just gonna let it go. He knew he'd be taken out too easily. So handsome guy, the damage opportunities are wide open. Do you just go Dark Peddler first, see what you get? I think that you probably want to just fire off your Peddler here. It's yeah. possible that you find something you just want to play out a bunch to the board. Uh, Diony does have you know, access to the ability to cast all his spells next turn. Uh, so really handsome guy needs to just try and start getting pressure in here. Yeah. Wow, he's going for a lot of damage, even dropping the Abusive Sergeant. But I mean, we're going into turns where things like Blizzard is going to come in. So you might as well get the damage done now. Diony is down to 11 life and has no secrets in play. This is yeah. just an incredibly precarious position for the Freeze Mage player. If Blizzard is played here, it'll leave the two tokens left from the Haunted Creeper. And there's a silence. And there's, actually... a, there, there's a silence also. And there's a power overwhelming yeah. in the hand with power overwhelming plus Doom Guard or, or just the Owl to unfreeze your Lotheb, yeah. if that's the case, to, to push in for lethal damage. So Diony is already under so much pressure. 
Frost Nova seems like he has to go for this. He, he needs to develop a secret. Yeah, Frost Nova. And would you throw down the Doomsayer too? Probably kind of feel obligated, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, the Doomsayer will come down, yep. but Handsome Guy does have the Owls to deal with it right now. Yeah, that's true. He could just uh, silence oh, his own Lothar, too. Wow, no, he, he threw another power wall. That's the game is just what? over. Wow, <laughs> talk is... about a good draw. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess that's game one. That is not how you usually see Freeze Mage versus Zoo going. Yeah. You get exploded <laughs> on turn six. You see Diane just on your screen laughing. He's like, well, what do you do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess, I guess that just happened. Well, that is game one, yeah. We have the most... Jumping out to a lead. We have the most epic, you know, crazy freeze mage games <laughs> across an entire week of the Asia Pacific Winter Championships. We get to the grand final. It's like turn six, done. It's about Next time game, freeze please. mage got shut down, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. I'll well, allow it. <laughs> Diane <Dianne> just like... <laughs> Look uh, at that I'll... face. He's just like, oh. That okay. Is, what can I you guess do? That happens. That's that's not really what, how you want to start a grand finals, is it? If you're Diane, <laughs> oh, I, I like to win more than I like to lose. So yeah, I yeah. agree. That's true. <laughs> All right. Seems reasonable. So do you stick with the mage? Do you switch things up a lot? Well, the interesting thing is that is the freeze mage's best matchup yeah. against handsome guy. That's where that's the matchup you wanted to get and you lost it. Yeah. Yeah. So now the druid is a tough matchup. The mage is. At best, you know, 50 50 ish. There, there is the difference in style between the two versions. Yep. And the Antonitis versus the, the additional burn, I think the additional burn is probably a bit better. It, it's very close. Standard Freeze Mage usually runs a heal bot. Right. That's true. Uh, but this one doesn't, as far as we know. Um, so it, they're very similar. Um, usually the standard one, like I said, is favored. But Antonitis really doesn't make too much of a difference just because you usually have enough burn anyway. Right. Um, and, it, and it basically comes down to like who can play Alexstrasza and have enough burn to back up the Alexstrasza first. So, and we uh, actually saw this Freeze Mage mirror happen between these two players uh, yesterday. Yeah. And there, I think Diony didn't really navigate the matchup quite as well as Handsome Guy. And that kind of confirms what we've been thinking the whole time, that when it comes down to some of these really meta matchups, that Handsome Guy has the edge just based on experience. And I'd imagine we're going to see more of that in these grand finals. Looks like we're about ready to move into game number two. So we'll see what these guys decide to bring out. Will Handsome Guy take that 2-0 lead, put himself one game away from the big win, or will Dianne tie it up? He's going to go ahead and switch to that Zulok. Oh. So we've got the reverse now. Oh, this yeah. is what we just saw. Yeah. A except this time... I well, imagine it won't go quite yeah. the same way. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> very that rare. Lot. That's yeah. very rare for, for people at home that, that may not have have seen much <laughs> Zoo Warlock versus Freeze Mage, it usually doesn't end like that. Well, Diony wants it to end like that again. He's like, well, if he can do it, I could totally beat his Freeze Mage with my Zoo Warlock. Well, with this this hand from Handsome Guy, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. He's, he actually has a really slow hand. Uh, he has no Mad Scientist, no Frostbolt to stop the early bleeding. His first play that is available to him is Accolade of Pain or just Arcane Intellect on three. Yeah, yeah. and it, it looks like he's going to have to. He, he's on the ping this Knife Juggler over two turns play. Yeah. Because now oh, I don't man. think he can even afford to play Arcane Intellect because that Knife Juggler represents so much straight up damage mm -hmm. and potential damage. Oh, no. There's and a Bran. Bran well, we here. saw Bran show up last game just to get exploded, but end the game. So, yeah. Will he do a bit more this time around? We'll see. Yeah. Nope. Nope, you won't. Double oh. Ice Lance take out Bran. Oh, wow. That's a big commitment to make yeah, this early in the game, that, isn't it? That is absolutely a big commitment. It uh, oh, means that Handsome Guy's burst potential later on will be much lower. Huh. Okay. Well, MKing boss coming down now, maybe, for Dione. There's not too much to play around early game with brand bronze beard i guess he just wants to take control of the board a little bit yeah and not let it get out of hand so i mean it, you're worried about starting peddler or something coming in sure, i suppose yeah. and yeah but double ice lance that's a big commitment so the antonite is coming into the hand of handsome guy it's not the greatest draw for him right now and diane just trying to put the pressure on Frostove is an excellent pickup for Handsome Guy. He he doesn't have a Doomsayer to go with it. Even if he does, we see that Owl. The the uh, single Owl that is usually pretty popular in yeah. Zudex, it's likely to come up big this game, just like it did for Handsome Guy last game. Yeah. How does Owl do that anyway? You know, he just kind of stares at somebody, and they're like, I, I'm they're just transfixed to... by this Owl. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> they're, they're trying to talk, and you're just like, hoot, hoot, <laughs> hoot, so, hoot, so it's just really annoying. Hoot, yeah, every, hoot, uh, every okay, time they'll stop. Really annoying. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how this works now. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we do see uh, the 
Acolyte come down, get pinged. <laughs> there is Doomsayer for Handsome Guy, so yeah. he will at least have uh, inklings that he might be able to clear the board. A little bit more damage coming from Diane either way. This is one of the benefits of Archmage and Tinnitus, is that when reduced with Emperor Thorsen and a couple spells, you can really get a lot of burn going. The best spells, though, for that are the Ice Lance, Ice Lance. which are gone. They're gone! Yep. All right, well, Handsome Guy continues to collect all of the most expensive cards in his deck <laughs> as Alex Strasse shows up. I feel like you kind of want a Frost Nova Doomsayer here, huh? Frost of a Doomsayer is certainly attractive, but Emperor oh, is what wow. Handsome Guy chooses. He, that is brave. Well, Emperor does force Dianne, or at least encourage Dianne, to commit some resources into actually clearing it off the board. I suppose. Or he can just uh, abusive the Flame Imp. Yeah, the scary thing is, or ooh, another abusive. So we're actually going to see just the Imp take down the Emperor. That poor Imp, The man, Imp has getting... risen up to take down the Emperor. He was abused so much, though, before it happened. <laughs> to take his anger out on somebody and 13 health is all that handsome Ooh, and guy is there left. is flame strike yep the That's problem the is handsome guy is at 13 and he will be leaving a 4-4 four four. Huh. Mm -hmm. if there is a power overwhelming and doom guard in Diane's hand flame strike actually gets him killed all right so it looks like it will be the frost nova doomsayer this time around all right this is a, a smart play also he actually pings the ink game boss to make sure that the board is full yeah and this means that iron beak owl from Daihini cannot come down and stop this board clear yeah also lothab uh, wouldn't be able to come down to make spells less effective the next turn oh this is actually a huge moment in this game huh. you know all of a sudden Daihini goes from having this massive board presence with an owl to protect it to not being able to use that owl. And the handsome guy now has this handful of incredibly powerful cards that he has a window to play. Do you maybe just Alex Strasse here then? Handsome guy doesn't really have the burn in hand yeah, to that's end true, the game. I guess. Yeah. You can Archimedes Antonidas and Arcane <laughs> Intellect, but it puts hey, a lot of pressure. Oh, all right, well, it is an 8 8 after all. It's, it's still a dragon. He might not be able to just end the game right away, but he still has a dragon in play. I haven't heard, heard you underestimate dragons very often. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of have an affinity yeah. for that. He came to you with say? that question, <laughs> and I could see Doe was kind of offended. He's like, whoa, man. <laughs> I was just shocked. Do you, you know? play the dragon? Gave, no, what? Like, what? No. I gave you a softball. Where's Brian Kilbert? What have you done with him? Well, I mean, Dr. Boom uh, Voidwalker seems like a pretty solid way to go. Yeah, the One of the things about the Dr. Boom, it, 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 it's nice sometimes when your opponent is low enough that you could potentially threaten if they do have something like Flame Strike or Frost of the Doomsayer, that the yeah. Boom Bots can threaten to actually kill them. Here, this is an interesting spot because Handsome Guy could actually, he, he doesn't have enough, uh, he doesn't have an Ice Block up. He does have an Ice Block in hand, but he can't play Ice Block and that Flame Strike. Because hmm. he could play Ice Block and Flame Strike. He could actually just go to the face entirely. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. oh. I was thinking for a second there. Oh, you can't clear the Void Walker now, can you? Well, you can just hear a bar, but then you can't play Ice Block. Well, he can, he can ping yeah. and then just attack face for eight, which is so much damage. That's true. Brings him down to seven. At 17 on the Handsome Guy side, you should theoretically be safe. And he has Blood Mage, Thalnos, and Arcane Intellect in hand. If he can find true. Fireball in three cards, if this dragon gets one hit in, the game ends. But Yeah. And he okay. does go for it. So there's Frostbolt. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't really see a way that Danny climbs out of this one. Just because the Zuwalk deck runs absolutely zero healing, unless he can pick up a, a Voodoo Doctor from the Dark Peddler, which really is pretty <laughs> inconsequential. Yeah, well, I mean, there's still just a dragon in play. <laughs> yeah. He can implosion it also, yeah. but... Well, what if? No. Yeah, because he doesn't have enough, even if he... Even if he silenced Dr. Boom and then played Doom Guard, he wouldn't have enough to uh, yeah. finish off Handsome Guy. He could just play Archmage in tonight. It's an ice block next turn. He knows that he's completely oh, safe. And yeah. then he could just fireball the next turn. And even if Lothab's played, he'll still be able to, to fireball as long as he can fit in a ping. He's got the choices between uh, Soulfire and Power Overwhelming here. Mm. Not counting Lowly Squire. <laughs> it's, it's a it's card. right out. <laughs> Poor guy. One day he'll be a real knight. Well, they don't call him Lowly Squire for a reason. All right, so we'll go ahead. Yeah, unfreezes. Doc Root goes face. All right. Well, that's a lot of damage, but handsome guy has a big opportunity. Whoa. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> huh. All right. Well, I think I he guess... just recognized that he wasn't going to win that game. I don't know what that was all I about. I guess so. That was a little bit surprising. <laughs>
All right. Huh. Well, I, I mean, I, I think, think that game was firmly in Handsome Guy's control, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't totally guaranteed right. over just yet. I mean, when you saw both Ice Lances used so early, too. I mean, it, I imagine Diane was just thinking he's got to have it. Yeah, he was dead to a huh. fireball. He was dead to pyroblast. He was, dead to, he was pretty much dead to board freezes because he could just ping him down over a couple turns. It's the grand finals, I, though, man. Yeah, that, I'm, that's I'm, true. That, was, true. A, that huh. was really kind of strange. It was. I mean, if you're going to, I mean, he's like, well, I'm going to lose. I'm going to be exciting. Yeah. I lose. I, or surprising. I wasn't expecting that. I, I also was surprised. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There you go. Well, living up to what he's trying to do. I don't I know. But now Handsome Guy just needs to win with Druid. He's one game away from becoming the winter champion. Which, yeah. Which is, he, he's got a lot of good matchups or at least one good matchup left. And that is against freeze mage yeah so uh at least one of those matchups is good zoo warlock hmm. not necessarily as good it can win and this version that does have the doom guards mm -hmm. does a little bit better than you know the sea giant version that we've seen across the other championships so he I, I, handsome guy's in a great spot yeah I, he is he is in an incredible position to yep. win this tournament still ahead in the fan vote way ahead in the game uh, we haven't had a 3-0 all weekend though so if we do get it that'll be our first 3-0 in the grand finals <laughs> So I don't know. I feel like Diane can at least come back and win one, but yeah, not if he just concedes before the game <laughs> yeah, is technically if, over. If he's, he's going to try and win the tournament, he has to try and win the games That's in true. the tournament. You, usually one thing does follow those the other. Are, those that. are fairly yeah. crucial linking things. <laughs> yeah. Well, time to get into game number three, guys. Handsome Guy has a chance to win it all right here, secure his spot at the World Championships at BlizzCon later this year. Diane it's do or die time. Do or die, you need time. No, <laughs> no, oh. I'm not. I'm so sorry for that one, but it's too late. It's in the past. Let's just forget it. Let's go into game three, guys. We don't need to talk about that. So it will be Zoo versus the Druid now. Yeah, and this is a matchup. I mean, we did just see Naviut win this matchup against Handsome Guy. He brought yeah. it to the game five with that Druid win over Zoo. Yeah. Druid is a deck that can just take wins against anything if they get an explosive enough start. If, if I was in the Grand Finals and I was up 2-0, the deck that I would choose nine times out of ten to be the deck that I needed to take one more win with, i take Druid. I mean, that's you a reason would. that so many players bring... <laughs> and there we see Wild Growth and then an Innervate in the hands of Guy's hand. He has the tools he needs. Oh, Brand Bronzebeard coming up for Diane. He's got the Dark Peddler to follow up with that a little bit later, but look at all this ramp. I imagine Hansom we may Guy's see hand. a cat. Yeah. Cat yeah. kill Bran. Bran is very scary. Bran's been just coming around the corner into some really dangerous stuff in the last uh, <laughs> few matches here. No one likes to see that guy live, you know? <laughs> These guys are playing so fast. I know, it's I incredible. Know. We're already on turn four. All right, well, Power Overwhelming, he's going to uh, kill off the Panther, get himself into Rubian. Yep, might as well play that Flame Imp, too. So, decent board built, actually, for Dianne right now. And some guy may be looking for a swipe. Okay, there, well, there's swipe. a swipe, but it's not it's actually... Hmm. It's only okay here. He can kill a 4-4, put one damage in the others. He'd love to have a second Innervate to Azure Drake, yeah. Innervate, Innervate, Swipe. I'd love to kind They're of have everything. a second Drew of the Claw here, too. Yeah. Drew of the Claw would block some damage, but you're always leaning towards, you know, the mana efficient play. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would be leaving a pretty strong board up. Maybe he's hoping to pick up a Wrath to use with that Innervate, but he's not going to. And I think he's going to get pretty heavily punished here. Ah, no, oh, okay. boy. Not going... Yeah, okay. oh, I was going to yeah, say. Lothab. Yeah. <laughs> Lothab is brutal here. It does lock out pretty much Handsome Guy's entire hand. All right, well, there's the return Lothab from Handsome not Guy. Not quite as good. <laughs> not, not quite in this situation. Just going to drop the Pile of Shredder. Can at least trade with the Azure Drake, I suppose. Or do you save it to hope you can swipe I next turn? I think he wants to attack into a minion here that, it probably, that he won't trade with because it, it will either allow him to potentially use that swipe next turn or force Diane to trade two things into it, which yeah. reduces overall more power in play. All right. Well, Direwolf Alpha, he's also got Defender of Argus, so a lot of buffing can be done right now to the board. Yeah, this, I mean, this is already just so much damage for Diane. Yeah. He's going to do another, what, 11 this turn? Yeah, yeah, if he just plays Defender of Argus, he puts Handsome Guy down to just 10 life and has you know, this just enormous, enormous board presence already. Yeah, mm. he's got part of a one. Well, there's oh, the Doom Guard, too. Oh. Yeah, and this this game kind of looks like game one in terms of how one-sided it is. This is bit. Diony just absolutely hammering Handsome Guy. Yeah, well, well, both players have decent starts in this matchup. It usually goes to the Warlock. Where you see the Druid winning is when they just have a crazy explosive start or 
the Zoo Warlock just whiffs on a lot of their early turns. So this feels like the, the standard experience for this matchup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the key for the Druid is really innervate into something big. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that something big it usually has to be Dr. Boom or Ancient of War. Even like eight, uh, Ancient of Lore often just isn't enough because it's only a 5-5 five five and there's so many cards in the Warlock deck that allow it to trade up into a single big minion. So, I mean, what do you do here if you're a handsome guy? You can use one of the Force of Natures to uh, clear both of the big minions, at least. Yeah. He, he can clear the board uh, yeah. with Force of Nature and Innervate Wrath. Cause... But he'll be left with nothing. He'll be giving full initiative over to Dainey, which, yeah. I mean, he's had it for the whole game, but... I mean, we know, too, that if he doesn't do this, he's dead. Yes. So no, this this absolutely this. puts him in a situation where he is not dead to... Doomguard yeah. power overwhelming, which Diony has. It's not quite dead yet. I mean, Diony could just play Doomguard, and he might he might keep the the power overwhelming. It's not quite lethal. Isn't that doesn't that feel too risky though? Well, I mean, the rest of his hand isn't that good. Yeah, and it's still and five, Doomguard seven. is just a five seven. This True. isn't like Leroy. This is one of the reasons that the Doomguard version of Zoo is, I think, a, a bit stronger against Druid than the Leroy version, simply mm -hmm. because Doomguard as a five seven body is just a great minion to play, even when it's not necessarily finishing your opponent off. True, Diony thinking about it. I mean, his whole tournament rests on what happens here. Loses the part overwhelming and the Owl. Wow, yeah. those are the, probably the two worst cards for him to lose. Well, I mean, he's putting Handsome Guy down to just five life with a five seven in play. Handsome Guy has the opportunity here. He could play the Force of Nature and use his hero <laughs> power to kill the Doom Guard and stay at just one life. Yeah, so he'll be dead to second Doom Guard. He'll be dead to Dark Peddler with yep. an Elven Archer. <laughs> a and lot of things would kill him. Oh, oh double Dire Wolf. I mean, that's, uh, what is that? Not quite enough, I suppose. Yeah, it is It is one off lethal, I yeah. believe. And he can play Void Collar, Wolf, Wolf, Abusive, attack yeah. you to one. I guess. So that Doom Guard has like a Wolf Entourage now, basically. <laughs> He's just hanging out. Got yeah. a bunch of, bunch of furry friends. Proper minion placement well, is, this is key actually, here. Exactly. Whether he attacks his opponent down to one or establishes a stronger board presence, I would go with the Imp Gang boss here. I suppose. Just because you're giving yourself a uh, you know board that is more resilient to something like Swipe, which we do see in Handsome Guy's hand. Yeah. Okay, there's the Keeper of the Grove, though. Is there a way Handsome Guy can put together a board clear here? He has this Force of Nature, which is his most powerful board clear effect. But I don't think he really has enough damage even with that. There's just so many bodies he has to clear, yeah. too. That's for sure. Huh. You know, it's actually smart for Diony to not go for that second wolf right away, too, because that would have opened up his Doom card to getting big game hunter as well. Yeah, no, that's also true. Yeah, very heads-up play by Diony there. Definitely don't want to attack your opponent down to one and then have them claw back into the <laughs> yeah. game because you exposed that to BGH. Every Zoo Warlock has had that happen at some point. Yeah. And then they try not to ever do it again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> then they just start sp keep spamming, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it feels like no matter I'm what he sorry. does, he's, he's always left with... Like one extra damage that he would need to remove. Nice. If he keepers and swipes, yeah, yeah and there you go. All right, that's that. So, no 3 0 at all in this tournament. Diane e gets his first win of the grand finals, and we are going to game four. Yeah, so still just that druid for Handsome Guy. Diane e has one with his Warlock, so he has Freeze Mage and his own druid remaining. So one winnable matchup and one very tough matchup left for Diony. It, it is possible. I mean, we've seen over the past few weeks and in this tournament, we've seen Freeze Mage overcome Druid. It has usually involved some missteps, some miscalculations by the Druid players, but it's not impossible by any means. Yep, that's right. So again, guys, if you want to join in on the conversation for this grand finals, Go to Facebook.com slash Hearthstone, or you can go on Twitter and tweet at Play Hearthstone using the hashtag HCT. Let us know what you think about this grand finals matchup. It's getting exciting. It's going down to the wire now. Could still see it end in the next game. It's also going super fast. Yeah, this has been a is. tournament that has had hour-long games, yeah. two-hour-long <laughs> matches. I don't even we haven't been sitting here that long at all. This yeah. it, we're already you know at match point, and it's it's not even 2-0. It's been a long day yeah. for these guys. It's been a long weekend, too. Everybody just kind of wants to get in there, you know, without sounding too much like a grim patron, I guess. <laughs> well, control versus control has been sort of the, the name of the name of the game for the past three yeah. days. And even just today, these guys have been sitting around watching all the other people play. So they know how these matchups are supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And they think, well, fatigue could play into this. So we might as well just play fast to try and 
<laughs> get it over with as quick as possible. Not that, not just fatigue, but actual, actual fatigue. fatigue. Physical not fatigue. the game mechanic. Yeah. Fatigue in every sense of the word <laughs> yeah. that it applies in uh, Hearthstone. So. Looks like it is time for game number four, guys. Handsome guy still looking for that one win with Druid. And Dianee has a chance to force a final game here at the Asia Pacific Grand Finals. Let's see what he goes with. Decides to go with his own Druid. And this is this is to be expected. Uh, yep. I, I think that if nothing else, you know, Dianee, he's someone who, he likes to be on stage. He's a streamer, he's an entertainer. Yep. Yep. And this is what gives him the best chance of staying alive to play another game. True. My personal favorite matchup. <laughs> the old Druid versus Druid. Oh, yes. All right, well, Dione is the one with the stronger hand. He has Wild Growth. He has two copies of Living Roots he can get on the board right away. Handsome Guy, he has some spells, but not much else. Do you go ahead and do both Living Roots right away? Uh, I don't think so. Your coin is too valuable. The one ones yeah. don't do that okay. much in this matchup. Space him out. And we're going to see, yeah, the, the Wrath, handsome guy, he wants to cycle through his deck to get uh, some of the better ramp cards. And there is a Wild Growth not quite on time. It won't let him play his piloted strider ahead of schedule. Yeah. Man, those uh, saplings from the Living Roots just look so excited to be doing what they're doing. They're just like walking forward with this big happy grin. Happy little trees. That's right. <laughs> happy they are, trees. In, in fact, exactly that. Happy little trees. That's right. Bob Ross loves that card. That's right. So Azure Drake comes down for Diony and picks up Ancient. So that's that's a great draw too. He has the Innervate. He can potentially play that next turn. And now Handsome Guy's playing on the back foot. This is exactly where you don't want to be. Just having to use your turn, reacting to your opponent's turn. Yeah. yeah. All right. Even if you remove every single creature from the board, as long as you're not the one playing the minion first, eventually you'll run out of spells to remove the creatures off the board and and by the time it gets to that point your opponent's probably going to be getting close to closing out the game with a combo so uh -huh. this matchup gets out of hand very quickly now that's an interesting stat right there handsome guy having a 60 percent win rate in a druid versus druid so that really shows that high of a win rate that he's got a very good understanding of this matchup because druid decks haven't changed a ton over the uh, course of hearthstone most of them tend to be within a couple of cards of one another so yeah. Being able to, to leverage a significant win rate advantage definitely showcases uh, a player's understanding of what's going on. Yeah. Draws some wild growth. Handsome Guy repeatedly with those wild growths right after he really wants them. And those <laughs> yeah. have been great in the op his opening hand, but they're pretty poor now. So Diony. This is actually a tough turn. I'd like to see Diony <laughs> think about it a little bit more before he nope. snap He's plays a card. So oh, fast. man. They both have. Like, they've been playing way faster in this finals than we've seen yeah. all weekend. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of options there. You could have Azure Drake and use Living Roots to clear off the first iteration of the Paladin Shredder and uh, cycle further into his deck. He could have silenced the Paladin Shredder. There was a lot to think about there, and he just went for the Druid of the Claw. Yeah, I feel like we're seeing a little bit of nerves come into play with these two guys, but if it's equally oh, like, wow. That actually, that's what? actually Thalnos. a pretty big deal. It means yeah. that Handsome Guy does not have to hero power, <laughs> which means if he wants to, oh, he can Wild Growth this turn. But it also just means he doesn't have to take four damage to the face. Yeah, he's going to go with the Wild Growth. That sets him up to possibly force Roar if he needs it as a removal effect next turn. Or just Druid of the Claw and Keep of the Grove. Yeah. It allows him to play a five mana uh, minion plus a four mana minion. So, And the fact that he, he got the Blood Mage Thalnos is also important because it's a minion that will draw him a card when it dies. So he, right now he's kind of low on resources, but this could draw him towards something like Ancient of Lore or other big things that could give him uh, more gas in this game. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Druid of the Claw coming in. Yeah. So handsome guy, he's got the victory in his sights. He's got the Force of Nature Savator. He's setting up a board here. So now Dione is the player that's on the back foot. Yeah, and this silence on the Azure Drake means that this swipe will no longer have spell power. Yeah. So it will take a little bit more to, to uh, clear handsome guy's board. Hmm. It's going to be a silence on the spell power of Handsome Guy. <laughs> Probably, yep. Okay, there's the swipe. Just really making sure that he denies all the draws he can from Handsome Guy. So with this Living Roots, it's going to mean that Handsome Guy won't quite have lethal this turn. But Dr. Boom certainly what? helps you. <laughs> helps right. there, doesn't he? Well, I, I, I yep. honestly <laughs> think that is the best draw in his deck at that point. That's the best draw in a lot of decks at a lot yeah, of points. Yeah. It's because it's, it's, it's pro proactive, but it's also reactive. Well, it's proactive in the fact that it puts a big threat, but it's reactive in the fact that boom bots can remove a board. And it also it, it presents a threat that is difficult for your opponent to remove when you have Force Roar in your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I can't imagine we're going to see him do anything other than play that Dr. Boom and just uh, I mean, I, use his I, hero power. Yeah, I think that he was thinking, okay, is there a way for me to beat Force Roar? Is there any way that I can win this game by playing something else? But he realizes that, whatever, if he has Force Roar, I'm dead. I just have to try and set up so I can possibly win the game in future turns. Yeah. That's a com pretty much a completely inconsequential draw, considering he already had the other Paladin Shredder. So it, it doesn't really change his his turn at all. Maybe it gets him a, a card deeper in his deck, but I, I think we're going to have to see Diony dig here uh, with these Wraths to try and uh, find something a little bit more impactful. I mean, if you do that, though, aren't you just dead to uh, the combo with Dr. Boom alive? I think that's why we're seeing Diony yep. kill this Dr. Boom. But he if he gives up all of his, in all of his initiative, uh, how does he clear this? He, he has to sacrifice one mm. of his creatures in regardless or face tank it, which he doesn't want to do. Face tanking it is about the last thing you want to do right now. Yeah. I mean, that basically would be the same as leaving Dr. Boom up. Well, besides concede. But <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he already did <laughs> that. Well, maybe that's not the last thing he wants to <laughs> yeah. do, actually. <laughs> Second to last. <laughs> well within his wheelhouse, as we've learned. Yeah. We're getting a good look at Wrath here. Beautiful cards. Looks like he's going to run the 4-4 into Dr. Boom. There we go. All right, so Shredder, Shredder. Trying to mitigate the boom bots here. Oh, th but this does mean that there's guaranteed to be these two minions up. Ooh. So this is... Is that enough? Uh, it's 14 plus... It's 21, I think. Yeah, it's, you are correct. Ah, okay, it is, in yeah. fact, exactly 21. That's right. Do you just go for it, though, and try I, to kill him with your Drew the Claw the turn after? I think after? you do. I, th I mean, I, right now, you, you know not? your opponent doesn't have Force War. If he had Force War, you were dead. Yeah. And if you if you do 21 to him here with that Drew the Claw in your hand... It is very difficult yeah. for your opponent to actually come back and, and win the game. Yeah. And yeah, you have you have other draws too. You're you're probably never gonna have two creatures on the board to combine with Force of Nature Savage War for the rest of the game. I mean, if handsome guy goes for the combo this turn and Diony doesn't get a taunt, it's just over. It is. Tiny could also draw uh, Ancient of Lore oh, that's true. and okay. heal himself to that's possibly true. get out of the, the range of Druid of the Claw. He could also no. <laughs> if we could trade one of his pilot treasures into the boom bot and have it be killed and get a taunt. He could also draw Raven Idol, <laughs> get healing touch out of it. Oh, Raven, Raven Idol is actually a Raven big Idol. deal. Yeah, yeah, Raven Idol into Tree of Life is a totally oh, real thing that can right. happen. That's true. Tree of Life. <laughs> oh, I'm no. not even kidding. Well, no, you're right. It, it costs 10 mana, yeah. yeah. So, handsome guy going for the long play here. Going to oh, save the combo. Oh, my goodness. And it's Raven Idol. That's the Raven Idol. Idol. All right. Well. All right. What's more <laughs> likely, though? Can you uh, get a heal off of a minion or a spell more likely? Uh, spell, definitely. Probably spell, likely. yeah. Well, you can also get an Ancient of Lore. True, but yeah. I think spell... So, Tree of Life and Healing better. Touch are the, are, the, are the spells. Well, we're going to find out right now. What does Diony think? Minions. <laughs> you, you, can also, you can also get, like, Force of Nature, which, you know, while not a yeah, heal, yeah. It, it helps clear some of the board. If you yeah, get Force yeah. of Nature here... He goes for minion and okay. Oh, well, it's uh, a booty bay bodyguard. Bay bodyguard. He's back. He, he got himself a taunt. If that's what he's in the market for, heckler what? <laughs> yeah. It's all about the booty bay bodyguard. You gotta go for the taunt. All right, he does. All right, <laughs> wrath comes in. Raven Idol spending a long time. There we go. Okay. Can't. Ooh. Oh, hello. Uh, I don't know if that matters. You gotta play the booty bay, bay bodyguard. Yeah. That's hard to say fast. <sighs> No. He's not playing the taunt. No. He's going to clear all but one minion, though. He gets to clear all but one. So he's actually... He's still not he's dead. He's still not dead. You're but right. But if... The Boomba... If Boomba goes Boomba face four... No, he can't do it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the taunt's oh. got... <laughs> there come two. And hits the guy oh draws my goodness. innervate. So okay. At this point, do you just go for the grindy game and just clear the board I mean, and reset? I, I, I guess. I think you might have to. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dione, how can he do this? <laughs> it's a power of space. It's and a little buddy. Robocub shows up. Hmm. Man. The funny thing is that Booty Bay Bodyguard would have also stopped the Druid of the Claw. Yeah. So <laughs> if he true. had taken the line the turn before, Booty Bay Bodyguard would have saved Dione as well. We've seen Diony win games in insane ways. We've seen him win with Starfire. We've seen him, or, uh, yeah, yeah, Starfire, right? Yeah. We've seen him win with other things that I can't remember right now, well, but that's not important. In the, if you go back to the oh, career oh, no. preliminaries, the bull frame shield yeah, from his golden monkey, right. which blocked the combo. I mean, so. a, there was the, the Deathwing earlier today that sealed it out against Pipping Hell. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be Force Roar. Space definitely knows Diony because it's clearly like conspiring to help him win this game. The universe wants it to happen. 
Uh, he's going to hold on to the roar. This does yeah. give him the possibility of drawing an additional force of nature for more power. It's true. Or, you know, runner, runner, force of nature, second savage yeah, roar. Yeah, that is a possibility. Oh, all for, right. Well, he can't. Oh, he doesn't play the taunt. Man. Well, Emperor I guess he's here, still okay. Emperor here is, is I think, fine. The taunt, right now, you're facing down an opponent who clearly couldn't kill you in their turn. You'd be playing it a swipe, too, if you played the four health minion, I suppose. Yeah, also yeah. true. All right, well, it's a cheaper booty bait well, bodyguard. There you go, <laughs> you Brandon. See, now look, he's got look value. Look at that reaction of Handsome Guy. Wow, he's like, I man. just played it. <laughs> How is this happening to me? Well, he does have the opportunity if he draws his second force of nature. Yeah. That is all of the damages. You have to just sit on this until you get that second force of nature. Well, actually, with with the hero power and the booty bay bodyguard, I think Daiyi is actually out of range of even double combo. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. He's getting he's going up now to 21 life. Booty bay is four points of health and a taunt. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, this is, is one of the most insane games of Hearthstone I've ever seen. What's it going to be? Ancient okay, of War. Okay. That, well, a little bit of healing maybe? I don't even know if there's but anything. The thing Goes is, the card. Healing, healing, can't, healing can't win this game. He has to... Well, he's not going to win the game by... Well, if he, if he drew Swipe here, he could possibly... No, he'd still die anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. Then. We're going to game five. <laughs> We're going the distance. Dianne e takes yeah. game four in the Druid Mirror. Uh, look, at, look at the expressions <laughs> of both those players. Just face in their hands, just... So stressed out. This is this is going to be a huge game for both these players. Thank Ra you, Booty Bay Bodyguard. Raven Idol MVP, regardless of the line of play yeah. that Handsome Guy had took that turn, Raven Idol would have, have stopped it in its tracks. So uh, that that tech card, that really interesting, you know, uh, flare that, that Diony put on his deck comes out, turns out to be pretty good. It's it's worked wow. out pretty well for him in, in several games here so far. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, who, who thought? Double Raven Idol really doing wonders for uh, for Diony. Yeah. So that leaves us with Freeze Mage versus Druid here, which again, we've talked about this before. This is, uh, you know, something that we've seen all week where generally Druid should beat Freeze Mage, but... It's usually considered an know. advantage matchup. We yeah. have seen a lot of matches go the other way. Yeah. It, it, not only in this tournament, but also in the past few weeks of championships as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the Hearthstone Championship Tour, the entire winter championships have been sort of a roller coaster as far as, you know, favorable matchups and unfavorable matchups. I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> I mean we saw we saw game one of this match. We saw the Zoo deck just absolutely pummel Freeze Mage. Yeah. Kill him yeah. in turn six. Yeah. All right, well, it is time for our last game, guys, in the Asia Pacific Winter Championships. Diane e versus Handsome Guy, Korea versus Korea, the streamer versus the ladder monster. And I have no idea who's gonna win this one. I mean, I said from the start, I felt Handsome Guy was, was the favorite going in, and uh, I, I'm gonna stick with that here. <laughs> Obviously, in this sure. matchup, you know, he, he certainly is uh, positioned to have the edge. Now that it's game five, I think the players are probably going to slow down a little bit. You think so? I would, You'd I think would so. hope so. You'd think that because it was the grand finals of the tournament, they'd slow down. But they've both yeah. just been playing at a breakneck pace. Yeah. But this game has so much riding on it. You've got the prize. But more importantly than that even, you've got the spot at BlizzCon. You've got the spot at the World Championships later this year. Well, right this now... This is a huge game of Hearthstone. I like Dianese... I like Dianese opening hand much more than I like Handsome Guys. Handsome yeah. Guy, he has Wrath, which is mediocre. He's got Savage Roar, which is you know mediocre at this stage of the game. He did just pick up a Wild Growth, but that's you know, a little bit late compared to when he'd like it. Look at this, Diane e. Kind of getting that uh, aggressive Freeze Mage start with those minions. Yeah, we've, we've seen huh. the, the beatdown plan uh, come through for him several times before. Yeah. And this was, we, we saw, in fact, exactly this, the, the Druid on the back foot against the swarm of tiny minions out of the Freeze Mage. It's just yeah. death by a thousand cuts from the Freeze Mage. Yeah, he, he's got the burn as well. He's, he's got the cycle. So th this is a great start from Dionysus. If you got Forgotten Torch, which is actually Fantastic to use for removal early on in the game. The crazy it thing also is, also puts more burn in your deck. The crazy thing is, if Handsome Guy innervates out Ancient of Lore or plays Lotheb here, it just dies to the board plus a hero power. Mm -hmm. it, he, he actually, <laughs> even if he cuts off Diony from playing spells, he can remove the biggest minion that he can play. It's a big choice for Handsome Guy. I mean, 
You've also got the option to silence either the Acolyte of Pain or the Mad Scientist, I suppose, too, but... That's a tough spot because yeah. Keeper of the Grove is so crucial in allowing you to deal with Doomsayer later on as well, or even just freeze effects on your yeah. large minions. Denying all of the draws from Acolyte of Pain, though, is actually a pretty big deal. So it, it, this is actually a really oh, tough turn. Or some guy. handsome guy. Letting it go down to the rope. I can't blame him. What do you do? He, he has another option of just using his hero power to kill the uh, the mad scientist and playing the wild growth, which would enable the uh, he, uh, ancient next turn. He is yeah. just going to go ahead and innervate and kill the mad scientist in yep. addition to Lotheb. This will protect the Lotheb from that attack attack ping plan, uh, as well as cut Daihini off of spells this turn. Yeah, I think Daihini, there was a, a little bit of a, a, a surprise face from, face from him, but I think it was followed by relief because now he doesn't have to worry about Lothab. That's out of the way, which is gives you a lot of peace of mind that is good point. in this matchup because you don't really oh. have to play around too much. Hi, Blood Mage Thalnos. That's nice to see for Dianne. He's gonna send him out right away, I guess. Yeah, often in some matchups, you wanna hold on to your Blood Mage Thalnos for a big burst turn, but I think right. here, he just wants to cycle through his deck to find those key cards. Just have his little minions getting incremental damage on uh, both Handsome Guy and his minions as well. Okay, well, combo in hand now for Handsome Guy. Uh, we, it looks like we may just see this Keeper of the Grove neutralize I the additional draws from Acolyte of Pain. He didn't really have a great play with this turn, is the thing. I think neutralizing the draws seems pretty, pretty decent. Well, he doesn't neutralize all the draws, I suppose, but... It is valuable, but it is a major resource he's giving up to do it. The Keeper of the Grove is crucial at dealing with a lot of the, uh, the ways that the Freeze Mage deck can shut down what the Druid deck is looking to do. Yeah. So Forgotten Torch comes in with the Hero Power. He's going to be able to clear out Lotheb. Yeah. Now, Handsome Guy with very little pressure. He is able to play an Ancient of Lore to kind of gas up his hand here. And he has Force Roar waiting in the wings. Oh, that's uh, two really good cards, I think, for Handsome Guy to pick up here. Yeah, they're, they're good, but he also needs just minions. Right now, the only minion he has just to play on the board is Big Game Hunter. So he's got really good ways to close out the game, but he doesn't have way to, you know, put on the pressure that will help him close out the game. Yeah, right now, he doesn't have the ability to really threaten Daihani, and you know, if, if, these, if these minions get killed, he doesn't really have anything to replace them with. Hmm. 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 What to do? Yeah. Decisions, decisions. That's Blizzard time. Yeah, he, okay. he does have both Blizzards. I, I was thinking maybe he wants to try and cycle there, like use the, the Arcane Intellect, but uh, Frost Nova has, has a lot of use, especially with Doomsayer. A lot of times you want to hold on to the Frost Nova as long as possible oh, wow. to have an emergency play for right. the Doomsayer. Uh, well, there's Doomsayer. Double, double Force of Nature, double Savage Roar in Handsome say. Guy's hand. So he, he has the tools to certainly break Ice Block over the course of a couple of turns. Do you just use one of those combos right away next turn? I think that you might. If you get Blizzarded again, or you get Nova this turn, yeah. you don't quite have the ability to break Block with them. Hmm. Let the pain well, we're going to see Acolyte of Pain. Acolyte, and I imagine a Frost Nova. I can't imagine that, Di that Daihini just passes this turn, allowing handsome guy to attack with all of those minions. Yeah, he's drawn a lot, and he well, hasn't really played many minions from the left side of his hand. So yeah, there you, you know that he's sitting on a lot of spells. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he would have left those minions able to attack, his ice block would have just been gone next turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, Acolytes of Pain, the forward army for Dianne right now. And this is this is where knowledge that Lotheb is gone is actually huge for Dianne. He doesn't have to worry about trying to set up a, a, a two-turn lethal uh, once he's able to sort of get a bit of damage in here and there. He's able to, it looks like he's gonna go ahead and just oh, fire wow. Ice Lance on Azure Drake. I'm kind of surprised about this. I no. mean, if he draws into Alex Strasse, he would be in a really great position otherwise. Okay, okay. leaves it alive. I think he, it's probably a better idea. He gave up the information that he has Ice Lance though. Because True. that's the only True. one mana spell who hasn't been an Emperor Thor's hand played, so. Now Handsome Guy at least knows one of the cards in Dianne's hand. Yeah. Not that it matters right now as far as information goes, but it could matter later on when he has to think about what type of damage he needs to play around. Yeah. And I like this from Handsome Guy here, going ahead and putting uh, enough damage in that he gets Dianne within range of the second Force Roar, breaking Ice Block. Right. 
It so looks exactly like he's debating there. whether he wants to clear off the Accolade of Pain or just send the damage to face. One problem with with uh, killing the Accolade of Pain, he does take damage, clearly. Uh, but whether it, having that additional two damage to face is is relevant is is unclear. If, mm. if he's going to play First in Nature Savage on next turn, the damage to face is pretty irrelevant because right. he's going to pop the block at two damage anyway. He's thinking maybe if there's heal, but like if there's an ice barrier, it doesn't matter anyway because you wouldn't have enough damage regardless. Yeah, he's just going to face. Okay. If he if handsome guy dies by one health now, I guess he would have taken one damage. Well, you take anyway. you take one damage whether it attacks you or whether yeah. you attack it. Oh, there's another forgotten torch. Nope. And here, this is starting to add up. We see frothful ice lance, ice lance torch. Yeah. Oh wow. And, and with this the is ping. this is putting handsome guy into range of that pyroblast waiting in Daihini's hand. Yeah. If he has ice guy, block up, Lotheb is gone. If handsome guy doesn't heal above ten next turn. Tiny just wins. He uh oh. He is going into nine mana though, so he doesn't have enough mana oh, for right. pyroblast oh, yet. Man. But he can arcane intellect into a fireball. He also has two roaring torches in his deck because he's played both forgotten torches. He yeah. also so doesn't play the ice block too, so he can't. There's ancient lore. Oh, he gets it. That's the healing that handsome guy needs here. He can't break the block this turn. Actually, no, he, yeah, he's one damage off from breaking but, block. But there's still so much burn. There's four six damage spells in the deck. Okay, so he's going to go up to a total of 12. No, not 12, because he can't hero power here. Right, yeah, he's only at yeah. 11. And so. that, that arcane intellect can find a lot of things. Two arcane intellects. Oh, <laughs> Diony has so many shots. So yeah. the, the likelihood that he picks up either a fireball or a roaring torch here are pretty high. Or and just, there is there's a fireball. fireball. And fireball. Yep. Lotheb is gone. There, he knows the coast is clear for Pyroblast next turn. Look at his face. He, wow. he knows. Oh. He knows. This is it, man. A handsome guy. He's. I don't think handsome yeah, guy can win this. Yeah, there's nothing he no. can do. He can't break the. He can break the block, but the Pyroblast is there. He's at two life. He knows wow. it. <laughs> yep. Sends against, out the well played. Oh, wow. And look at that. Against all expectations, man. Against the fan vote, what we thought would happen. Diane is going to win the Asia Pacific Winter Championships with Freeze Mage versus Druid. Can you believe it? There's the Pyroblast, and, and Diane takes it. And a reverse sweep. Yeah. Just look that. at that reaction. He is so happy. What an insane best of five to end it with. What a great tournament this has been. Diane is your champion. That was a great set of Hearthstone yeah, games. I mean, look at, just look at that reaction from the champion. He is absolutely stunned. He is, oh wow, he is so emotional right now. Yeah, well that's the face of a man who's uh, gonna go to BlizzCon, gonna go to the World Championships, gets a great prize in this tournament, and of course the notoriety. And these guys, you know, good friends back in Korea, no doubt helping each other practice, going into this event. What, a, what an ending. Yeah, it, it's good for the Korean Hearthstone scene as well to have an all Korean final. And, uh, yep. All right. Well, we're going to throw it over to Frodan, who's got an interview with our winner. Congratulations, Dr. Huni. You are the Asia Pacific Winter Champion. What's going through your mind right now in this very moment, now that you're the winner? Too emotional right now, so you can't talk. <laughs> As an amazing end to the series, if against all odds, you were down at the elimination point, but you came back, so congratulations to win it. You said you wanted to do this for yourself. You said that you wanted to show that you could play seriously. Did you feel like you proved not only to yourself, but to everybody that you are a great Hearthstone player, that you're one of the best in Asia and in the world? <laughs> Uh, he knows there's a lot of more skills played than him, but he won and he's sorry about that. And also that this is a dream come true for him, so he can't believe right now that he won. Awesome. Well, let's wrap it up then with a final speech. The whole world's watching you right now. A lot of fans from Korea are tuning in. What do you want to say to everybody who's watching you right now? Uh, 
지금까지 저 응원해주신 분들 정말 감사드리고 어, 플레이 많이 어, 미숙하다고 생각하시는 분들도 계실 거지만 이번 기회를 통해서 더 많이 배웠고 여기가 마지막이 아니라 이게 시작이라 생각하고 모든 분들을 만족할 때까지 더 열심히 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. He believes that he tried his best this time and also he knows that he's not very skilled right now but he thinks this is just the beginning and the end and he will show his best ongoing to the BlizzCon. All right, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the Asia Pacific Winter Champion of 2016. It is Da Hyoni from Korea. We had an excellent series of games, a crazy amount of fun in this weekend. And once again, we have another person going to the World Championships. And that does it for us here at the Winter Championship. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys in spring for another season of the Championship Tour. For Ferdinand and everyone here in Hollywood, California, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.